Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation looking at your research proposal and how you actually present that. So this actually spans two of your various modules with me. First of all on your research methods module and that's where you do a presentation on your specific proposal. Then you actually get on with that proposal and do your project for your dissertation course. Okay and this is looking at doing the presentation across three different master's degrees the MA healthcare practice, MSc advanced clinical practice and the MSc interprofessional healthcare simulation. Now what I've done with this PowerPoint is made it look like the type of PowerPoint you may want to do for a presentation. So I'm showing you the styles especially by putting my um, uh, text nice and bold and clear and you can see it really well and watch then how I've done an animations throughout and you'll see on the front slide so if somebody was walking into the room where you're doing a presentation and they see your your title slide the whole title is jumping out at you you can also see I've put the logo in for the university and um, and I've put my name and my job title okay now that's expected of all of you so you should put the university logo in to show that this is where you're studying but also put your own employers um, logo in as well so when it comes to your name write that in and then you might put your job title at work and then master's student or postgraduate student and it can be seen that that's at the University of Greenwich but through this presentation, especially here on the front slide, I've actually made a few intentional errors so that hopefully you'll see those and you won't make them. So if you haven't noticed them already, you'll see that with the errors I'm, um, I'm trying to highlight for you, First one is that I've actually put the subtitle in a colour font that doesn't show up terribly well. So be careful of that, because especially if you're doing your presentation um, um, in person at a live venue, and maybe you're in a room where there could be sunlight coming in through the room, that when you use certain colours um, or certain font sizes, they're not going to show up terribly well, especially to people at the back of the hall. OK, so always make sure that your colour scheme is readable more than the fact that it looks pretty. OK, so that's the one error that I've come up with. The second one, and you'll see then the little red X bounced in. That may be OK, but you don't want to be too gimmicky with your... Um, um, animations. So when you're using animation, maybe go for a sort of plainish style. Say, for example, if you've got words coming in over the page, as you'll see on some of mine later on, I've got them appearing from the left because that's traditionally the way that we read from left to right. So that's coming in from the left. And I've slowed down the speed a little bit to what's called fast, not very fast, because that sort of whooshes in in front of your eyes too quickly. So play around with all of this. And why I've put an X on the bottom line is because I haven't put a certain really important fact on this screen. And that, that would be my contact details. So put your name, put your job title, the fact that you're a postgraduate student, but also put in your email address, usually your university one, put in your email address. And if you're on Twitter, you can put in a Twitter uh, um, handle as well. Now, when you're looking at the way to present your 15 minute presentation, there are certain slides you're going to want to have in. And one of them is going to be the introduction to introduce the topic. What is it that you're actually talking about in this presentation? And maybe the second slide after that could be the background to it. So the introduction introduces your topic, whereas the background is maybe giving a flavour of um, what it means to you and why you've selected a particular aspect of it. That could also be pa um, part of your rationale as well. But with the background here, I've put this little picture up on chances of success. So when you're thinking of doing your presentation, of course, there may be lots of difficulties and barriers, even in getting around to, to designing it in the first place. Maybe you're not accustomed to using PowerPoint or Prezi or whatever you're going to be using. So it could be that you need to learn some technology skills. That's going to be the one issue. Another one could be that you're studying and working hard and home life that it's very difficult to find the time. 
Or another one is that you're not too sure how to narrow the topic down. There are lots of these reasons that mean that your, your chance of success is going to be limited. So you need to work on those. Any barriers you find, um, even if it's a case of thinking, well, oh, I've never stood up and presented in front of other people before. You may perceive that as a personal barrier because you might think it's going to be rather difficult. Uh, in that case, then you need to be looking at ways to overcome that particular barrier. So all the challenges that you may face, look at ways of overcoming them. Now, when it comes to doing the presentations, right across your three different projects, um, there are certain things that you have to do. And it says that they must be conference acceptable. So even if you go onto the website of organisations that you follow, maybe it's your own professional group, and look at types of conferences they've put on, you might find that they've got guidelines on how to do presentations. And um, usually they're going to want really good, high quality stuff and that's what you need to be doing. So aim for a conference acceptable pre presentation. And what you, you will be doing, what you're focusing on, is to critically draw together, to critically synthesize the proposal for your project. So um, there are quite a lot of words on this page and again that's something you need to think about. Maybe don't have more than 40 words or so per slide. If you find that you have got that then split the slide up over a couple. But what you need to do for your assignment, when you look in the handbook, these are all the details in your own handbooks, okay? So you have to perform your presentation. And what it's based on is your research proposal for the study. So when you look on the Moodle sites, I've already put in um, a Word file that you can actually type straight into or print off if you want to. And that's a typical type of research proposal. So when people go to universities to, um, to study for a master's or a doctoral uh, degree, then usually they'll have to come up with some sort of proposal. And that's what you're doing. So have a look at that form. Maybe fill it all in because that will help you to conceptualize your ideas for it and then you're building your 15 minute presentation on that actual form. So your 15 minute presentation for your research methods course is actually on what you're proposing to do for your actual project. Okay, so you need to base it on your proposal. And these are some of the uh, slides that you may have in here. You may be talking about the aims. What is it you want to achieve? And then you might even have some um, objectives or some outcomes. And usually the difference between those would be the aim is what you intend to do. So the aim of doing my particular type of project is to whatever it is to do. And the objectives, um, if you try saying it um, in this way, say to yourself, by the end of this study, you will be able to understand this, explore that or whatever. So the objectives are the things you can tick the box to say, yes, I've achieved that, I've achieved that, I've achieved that. So the aim is the overall arching aim and the outcomes are the achievables. Then, on another slide, you might want to show us whether you've got a specific question that you're trying to answer. So it may be that when you're considering your project, you're thinking of it in such a way that you think, right, this is um, a topic that I'm not too sure of the answers about, and therefore my study is going to help explore the question to come up with some answers. So you may have a research question and maybe, and especially for master's degree, maybe just stick to one key research question, but you might have a couple of subsidiary ones that by, by the time you answer the subsidiary ones, that's helping you answer the main overarching one. Or maybe you've got a hypothesis, and that's a word that we actually study on your course, so that you'll be able to get to grips with what you understand by a hypothesis. Maybe a good way of thinking of that is an informed guess. It's reading on a topic, and that's helped you to form some opinions, but you want to prove or disprove them. So that's what's meant by the word hypothesis. Then you may be coming out with an action plan and you might even want to draw up a, a Gantt chart. Show us, so work back from when you're due to submit your dissertation, work back month by month and um, calculate what you need to be doing. Whether that's um, reading, whether it's gathering data, 
uh, whether it's writing certain chapters. So build all of this in so you're not left with everything to do right at the end. And obviously it's going to be really important that, that you consider the philosophical elements of your study as well. So what's the philosophical starting point, your epistemological starting point that you're coming to all of this with? Because once you know your philosophical starting point, that can dictate to you which type of uh, methodology you're going to be using or exploring and even the individual tools or methods you need to uh, um, to actually carry out your project. Now I've split these two slides um, into the healthcare practice MA with the MSc advanced clinical practice and on the next slide it talks about the MSc interprofessional healthcare um, simulation. Okay, so it's always important for all of you, look at your handbook and look at the specific wording. And I think one of the greatest ways to achieve your assignments really well is to make sure you do exactly what you're being asked to do and do it exactly how you're asked to do it. So what I've done here, I've just marked with different colours and certainly that's what I would do if I was having to do um, um, an assignment or maybe write a portfolio or something. I usually use fluorescent pens and I colour code it, I mark it. So I'll mark out the words that say what you must do. So look, here it says that you must um, negotiate and agree your topic with your module leader. Um, and even your program leader. So especially for the healthcare simulation students, because simulation isn't my background, then you may be wanting to do things that I have no understanding of. So what I'm saying to you is, you speak to your program leader or your program team, as well as um, clearing it with me as your particular module leader, okay? You have to show that you're working at level seven with all of this. So I've put lots of resources, including an Adobe Express page on what is level sevenness so make sure you get to grips with all of that because even when you use terms like critical analysis there's a difference in critical analysis at level six as opposed to level seven so what is that difference so you need to understand that so read up really well and study all the materials um, especially that I've put on Moodle for you so that you'll be able to understand what is meant by academic level seven then it says that uh, um, uh, with your presentation, look how you need to show uh, an in-depth knowledge and a, an understanding, a comprehension. You need to reflect, show how you've reflected on these things. So maybe you're talking about specific terms and maybe the terms can mean one thing in one context, but something different in yours. So you, you reflect on them and reflect on the impact of these. Um, you can appraise material critically. So even if you're reading studies by other people, don't just read them and accept them at face value, but you may be wanting to appraise the, um, the relevance of them, how well they've been carried out or how well they've been written. That's part of your appraisal as well. And then you have to show how you're critically analyzing all of this and drawing the main things, so synthesizing, drawing the main elements in together. You'll be doing your presentation live. Now, whether that's in a classroom or online, it's live and only in exceptional circumstances should you really consider um, pre-recording it. So talk to me if you need to pre-record, okay? But even for those of you that may pre-record, say, for example, if you're not going to be in the, in, in, the, in the UK at the time that your presentation is due, so you may pre-record it beforehand, but you still need to sign in online to be there live as your recording is showing, and at least you're there then for the question and answer time afterwards. Now, again, with the MA and the MSc ACP, you've got three options. So one of them could be an extended critical review of the literature. OK, so a, a 10,000 word dissertation, which is an extended literature review. And for all of you, I say, check out at least, well, to start with, the article by Grant and Booth on their 14 different types of literature reviews. Because don't go straight into this thinking, oh, I need to do a literature review exactly as I did my bachelor one, but I just have to extend the word count. It's not that at all. 
you need to look at Grant and Booth. So they talk about 14 different types and then look at some of the good textbooks on literature reviews in healthcare studies. Or it may be that you're looking at the big research methods books and usually there will be a chapter in each of those explaining to you all the different types of literature reviews. So find out about how many there are and different ones because then you choose whichever one is most appropriate for your topic area. So out of the 14 that Grant and Booth talk about, you might say, right, this one in particular is really relevant to my type of uh, topic. So you choose it. Because in your methods chapter, you need to tell us why you've chosen that particular style. So don't just say, oh, I've chosen this because I like it, or I've chosen this because I've never done this one before. You've got to critically think of why this is the most appropriate. Okay, so a really good example I can give you here is with COVID. Because COVID is something fairly new into the world, only over the last few years, one of the types of reviews that Grant and Booth talk about is something called a rapid review. And that means usually for a topic that's so new that it hasn't got a history. So you're not looking at it over five, ten or further years back. It's something that's quite new and local. So that could be a rapid review. So what you want to do is to tell us a bit about why you've chosen what you've chosen, but also just choose maybe a couple of others and show why they're not appropriate. So you might say, well, I've chosen a rapid review because my topic is COVID and therefore it's really topical and it's, it's, it's new into the world. So we're only just looking at all of this and it hasn't existed beforehand. However, maybe I could have done a traditional type of literature review and I could have looked at other SARS viruses and how they've developed and how COVID is different to those. So give us a critical understanding of what why you're choosing what you're choosing, but also why you're rejecting maybe one or two other types of reviews. And that shows that you're getting to grips with research methodology, that you're starting to understand the difference between various types of reviews, and that's going to be really healthy. Also, remember, more references are always better. So make sure you get references in for all of these. So if you say, well, I started off looking at Grant and Booth, that there are 14 different types, Grant and Booth, there's one reference for you. Then if you say, well, and I've chosen a rapid review, Grant and Booth might give you about three different examples of rapid reviews. So have a look at those so you can get a feel for how they're done, but make sure you get those references in. There's, you, you've now got three or four references, so keep building up your references like this. The second type of study could be an audit or service evaluation. Now for this and for the final one, the change management project, you will need ethical approval from our school ethics committee. That can take you some time to achieve that, so it's best that you start thinking about it early and we'll look at ways in which you access the various forms and the people that you have to contact about this. OK, so that's really, really important there. Um, so with the audit and service evaluation, the difference between those is you call it an audit if there's a formal national guideline uh, to map against. So supposing, so here in the UK, we've got the, um, the organisation called NICE, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence. OK, so supposing NICE have come out with a guideline on a particular type of uh, service provision and you provide whatever that is in your practice, but you want to assess whether you're doing it as well as NICE wants you to do. So you're comparing yourself against the NICE guideline. That's when you call it an audit. But if no such guideline exists, then refer to your project as a service evaluation. So you're simply evaluating it without a formal guideline to map yourself against. And the final one here is the change management project. So with this one, you'd need to be looking at various change management theories. And again, we'll cover those on your modules. But you look at various change management theories because you might be considering, right, my service, I'm sure it could be doing better. 
So maybe you even want to do a little bit of a service evaluation as part of that to map just where you are at the moment. And you say, well, this is what my service is doing at the moment, but I want us to move over to do it in a different way. So it's all these steps in between that change management theory looks at. So it's how you're going to implement that change and especially to win people over and not to alienate individuals. So you choose a particular um, change management theory you even consider some others and then in your rationale you can say well why you're choosing one and maybe why you're not choosing others or maybe you're going to mix and match and take a few elements of each but that is something that you critically explore throughout your study now for the other msc the um uh, the msc in interprofessional healthcare simulation your project options are similar, but except with one big change. So here's the extended literature review. The wording may be slightly different, but it means exactly the same here. So you're doing an extended literature review. You choose a specific model, just as I've explained. So you choose it, so you're doing it in a very systematic way. Yeah, you're not just, <clears throat> you're not just gathering a pile of articles and writing something about it. There must be, um, a systematic approach to how you're doing it but there are lots of different ways of doing it so that's what you can explore then and it's an extended critical review in which you investigate the research and the evidence base clearly identified to something within uh, simulated practice so it must be based on something around your world of simulation okay that's the one type here's the difference this project is different to what's offered on the other two master's degrees. So here you can choose to do a simulation activity with an associated publication. And look at what it says on the screen here. You may be choosing to do um, various types of projects. So maybe running and videoing a simulation. Or maybe you're, um, maybe you're writing debriefs for people who are going to be using simulation. So you actually carry something out, you do it. So you will need ethical approval for this, but you also need to write it up as an article. Now, again, there are so many different ways of writing articles and for so many different journals. So you choose a relevant journal, look at the author's guidelines and pick the particular type of article you want to write. So it could be something really short, like an opinion piece, and lots of journals might say, well, if you're writing an opinion piece, we only want about 750 to 1,000 words and no more than three references. So that's going to be a really short article. Somebody else might say, well, I want to write mine up as a literature review and the journal I want to go for wants 6,000 words. So what we'll need to look at then is however long the 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 journal article is that you're writing and hopefully then you've submitted it before you submit your dissertation so at least you can say well i've sent it off for publication whether or not it's been published by the time you finish with us hopefully it has but with lots of journals they may take a long time um, because of their rigorous processes OK, so it might be a case of you writing an article and then what we need to do is to see how you can incorporate that into your dissertation. Because if you say you wanted to write a literature review article and the journal says, well, we want 6,000 words, we don't want you writing 10,000 for the dissertation plus 6,000 for the article. In that case, you'd look at putting those 6,000 words into your dissertation and then you just need to write more around it um uh, uh to make up your ten thousand words so that's something that you, you you'll work out with your individual supervisors and the third type is this work-based change project again here it's just called the work-based project and it it allows you to implement and evaluate an initiative so there that's making a change you're bringing something in so especially from the, the view of simulation once you've done so much work here at Greenwich and maybe you're going back to your own hospitals or universities and now you want to implement change within them you want to develop something new so it looks at how you can go about the whole of uh, um, um, a change project here to implement your work now, when it comes to um, uh, making your proposal, so this form is on your modules and this is what you need to follow. Look, there's 
there's a slight difference between the various master's degrees here so just make sure you're following the right wording and when you look at all the steps on here you may want to be taking these steps to build up your slides so obviously the first one is going to be your title and your subtitle just as i showed you with this presentation okay so <clears throat> Um, make sure that you follow what it says on here and you might even want to, to type on this file or to print it off and handwrite it. Write this up as your research proposal and then you build your presentation set out of this. Okay, um, So you decide what type of study you're going to be doing and you tell us about it. Obviously you put your name and your university and your institution on there. So the next slide could be your brief introduction. And that brief introduction, you may include your interests into it, the rationale. You might show us the scope of it because you might say, well, look, as the introduction, you're introducing a topic and you might show that the topic is actually really huge. So that's going to be too big for your master's project. So you want to show how you're narrowing it down. So you're choosing a particular element of your topic. So work through this file write in what you can about it and that's a typical research um, proposal form and then build your presentation slide set up out of this and here you go for, for, uh, for, for, for the final bit of it so you must think of your philosophical starting point as well you must address the epistemology and ontology of what you're doing so make sure you get a mention in for those because especially from that philosophical perspective that may guide you to what type of project you're going to do and how you're going to do it so that your methodology and your methods the individual tools then because you haven't done the study yet you won't know what the contribution is that you're going to make or you won't even know what the limitations may be but you can have a guess at them so especially because you know enough about your topic area to, to do this presentation so far and when you've been reading around it you know enough to do this presentation so make sure that then you can show us what contribution you think you're going to be making and maybe address some of the limitations. And finally, what you, what it, what you would do with your slide set is show us all your references. So make sure you put your reference slides in as well. And normally when you're doing a 15 minute presentation, it's when you get to the references that that's when you say to everyone, thank you for listening, everyone. Um, here are my references. Do you have any questions? So you give the floor the opportunity for, for, for your audience to, to ask you questions. OK. OK, so it's over to you then. So please think about this. Fill those forms in or make sure you, that you get your presentation ready nice and early. Um, and even chat to us all online about this. So even if you're doing uh, um, a mind map, which I've got on the next slide here, even if you're doing a mind map diagram, maybe share that with us on the Moodle site and say, well, this is what I'm thinking about. So the formative assessment is you constantly chatting to us about all you're doing with this. So whether that's in classroom, or online. So online is great, especially when you want to, when you want to show images with us. So here you go. When you're thinking of original ideas, because you may have so many ideas in your head, there may be lots of projects you want to do, or you think your project may be too large. So this is what you need to do. Put the theme, maybe it's just keywords you've got at the minute, put the theme in the centre of your page. And then out of that, from all that you know so far and all that you've read, start coming out with some main areas. So here on this little mind map, look, it shows it just in different colours coming out. So that's where you've got the main themes. And you can either handwrite this or design it in PowerPoint or Word. Um, you can even go into Google and just Google free mind map tools and come out with some really pretty ones because you can put this into your presentation and hopefully you put it into your dissertation. So you could put it in as an appendix at the back of the dissertation, just showing us how you've critically explored the topic right uh, um, to start off with. So put the theme in the middle of the page. And if you've got more than one theme and they're very, very different, why not try this exercise a few times? Because once you've done it, you might then realize, oh, 
I now know it's this project I want to do and not that one. So if you have got a few ideas, try them all out. So put your theme in the middle of the page, come out with the main areas that you're thinking about. Then go even further and try to break those main areas down even more so you're exploring them all really well. Then the next stage is when you take this helicopter view. So stand over it. Supposing you've written all this on a flip chart and you've got the flip chart on the floor, um, stand over it, hover over it. Let me go back to that previous slide. So when you're looking at it, you might then notice that something on one part of the slide now mixes up with something right on the opposite part. And you might notice a few of these are together. Or maybe you haven't even written words down, but you're getting a gut feeling about something. So as you're looking at your slide um, or your, your, uh, your, your, your mind map, you might be thinking, wow, I never thought of this particular thing, but this is the gut feeling I got. So then maybe you want to redesign your project in relation to this new um, finding you've come across. So taking the helicopter view can really help there. And then that's when you go back to the drawing board, because it may be that you now want to do your project totally differently because of this new revelation you've had. So in that case, maybe do another mind map and then then you can even say to us during your presentation, well, look, this is how I first thought of doing this um, my dissertation. These are my original ideas. However, after doing the mind mapping exercise, I realized what I was really interested in is something that I can focus on here and then show us what that is. So that's when you may need to go back to the drawing board. OK, so that's it. Wishing you all success with this and I hope you have great fun with it as well. And that's why it's especially important. Talk to us all, especially on the Moodle site. So when you go into the forum zones, so maybe it's the weekly forum zone when we were looking at assignments, upload your mind map. Tell us about it. Ask for some feedback from your colleagues so that you're not doing all this work in isolation. And even if you're struggling, if it's difficult to find time or you're not sure how to do things, keep on talking to us all online so we can build up a really good classroom, a really good network of shared learning provision. OK, I hope you've enjoyed this and find it helpful. Thanks for listening. Bye bye.